I now hand the conference over to Ms. Anish Desai, Head of Investor Relations Team. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening and a warm welcome to our fourth quarter FY21 earnings call. I'm Nimesh from the Sun Pharma Investor Relations Team. We hope you received the Q4 financials and the press release that was sent out earlier in the day. These are also available on our website. Uh, we have with us Mr. Dilip Sangvi, Managing Director, Mr. Sujesh Murlidharan, CFO, Mr. Abhay Gandhi, CEO of North America, and Mr. Kirti Ganorkar, CEO of India Business. Today, the team will discuss performance highlights, update on strategies, and respond to any questions that you may have. As is usual, for the ease of discussion, we will look at the consolidated financial. Just as a reminder, the call is being recorded and the replay will be available in the, for the next few days. Call transcripts will also be put up on the website shortly. The discussion today might include certain forward-looking statements, and this must be viewed in conjunction with the risk that our business faces. You are requested to ask two questions in the initial round. If you have more questions, you are requested to rejoin the queue. I also request all of you to kindly send in your questions that may remain unanswered today. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Sangvi. <coughs> thank you, Nimesh. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this earnings call after the announcement of financial results for the fourth quarter and full year of FY21. I hope you and your family are safe and healthy. Let me discuss some of the key highlights. Consolidated sales for the quarter were at 84,314 million, recording a growth of about 4.4% year on year and a decline of 4% quarter on quarter. Most of our businesses have done well over Q4 last year with India, emerging market and rest of the world businesses as the key growth drivers. We continue to focus on growth, operational efficiencies and business continuity. For the full year, FY21, sales were 331,392 million, recording a growth of about 2.5%. All of you will remember that last year sales included a one-time special business in the US, which is not reflected this year. All our businesses have recorded growth for the full year, despite the challenges related to global COVID-19 pandemic. The major impact of the pandemic was felt in the first half of the year, as many countries imposed a lockdown to counter the spread of COVID-19. Second half witnessed a gradual recovery as most countries gradually lifted the lockdown restrictions in a phased manner. For Sun Pharma, the sales in the second half were higher by 8% compared to the first half. EBITDA was up by almost 13% and adjusted net profit was up by approximately 17%. Let me now update you on our global specialty business. For fourth quarter, our global specialty revenue was approximately US dollar 139 million across all markets. Specialty R&D accounted for approximately 23% of our total R&D spend for the quarter. For the full year FY21, global Illumia sales were at US dollar 143 million, up by about 51% over last year. We've recorded a good growth despite the closure of doctors' clinics 
in the U.S. in the first half of the year, but supported by gradual recovery in the second half. Abhay will give you more details on the specialty business later. I will now hand over the call to Murli for discussion of the fourth quarter financial performance. Thank you, Mr. Shangri. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to all of you. Our Q4 financials are already with you. As usual, we will look at the key consolidated financials. Q4 sales are at rupees 84,314 million, up by 4.4% over Q4 last year. Material cost as a percentage of sales was 26.6%, lower than Q4 last year due to product mix and other efficiencies. Other expenditure was at 30.2% of sales, lower than Q4 last year, mainly due to lower selling and promotion expenses in U.S. As indicated in our past earnings call, these expenses will see an increasing trend in future once the market situation reaches full normalization. Forex loss for the quarter was rupees 107.8 million compared to a loss of rupees 1420.7 million for Q4 last year. As a result of the above, EBITDA for Q4 was at rupees 19,568 million, up by 55.8% year on year, with resulting EBITDA margin at 23.2% compared to 15.5% for Q4 last year. Let me now briefly discuss the exceptional items for Q4. Taro has made the US dollar 80 million additional provision related to its ongoing multi-jurisdiction civil antitrust matters. Further in Q4, the Court of Justice to the European Union issued a final judgment and upheld the European Commission's decision dated June 19, 2013, that a settlement agreement between Runbaxi UK Limited and Runbaxi Laboratories Limited with Lundbach relating to Citalopram was anti-competitive. Runbaxi had made a provisional payment to the tune of Euro 10.3 million on 20th September 2013. Since there are no further rights of appeal, this amount of rupees 895.6 million has been debited to the consolidated profit and loss account in Q4. There is no cash outflow related to this as the amount was already paid. Exceptional tax for the quarter is on account of recognition of deferred tax asset amounting to rupees 1,212.3 million arising out of the tariff settlement. Excluding the impact of exceptional items and deferred tax, the adjusted net profit for the quarter was at rupees 13,430.7 million, up 103% over adjusted net profit of Q4 last year. Reported net profit for Q4 was at rupees 8,941.5 million, up 124% year on year, while reported EPS for the quarter was rupees 3.73. Let me now discuss the key movements versus Q3 FI21. Our consolidated sales were lower by 4% quarter on quarter at rupees 84,314 million. Material cost and staff cost at 26.6% and 19.9% of sales respectively are flat over Q3 FI21. Other expenses at 30.2% of sales are higher than Q3, mainly due to increase in lg and across markets. We had a forex loss of about rupees 107.8 million for Q4 as against forex gain of about rupees 716.3 million in Q3. As a result of the above, EBITDA for Q4 at rupees 19,568 million was lower by 16.8% compared to Q3. EBITDA margin for Q4 was at 23.2% compared to 26.8% for Q3. Adjusted net profit for Q4 
stands at rupees thirteen thousand four hundred and thirty million, was lower than the net profit of Q3 by about twenty seven point five percent. Now we will discuss the full year performance. The full year FY twenty one sales were at three three one three nine two million, a growth of two and a half percent over FY twenty. Despite the nearly ten percent sales degrowth recorded in Q one due to the global pandemic. we have been able to recover sales growth in subsequent quarters and have achieved an overall positive growth for the full year also as indicated in the past the full year of the last year included contribution from a non recurring special business in the us and hence the year on year sales numbers are not strictly comparable excluding this one time sales contribution during the last year the year on year sales growth would have been higher material cost as a percentage of sales was 26.2% which was lower than the same period last year mainly due to product mix and efficiency initiatives staff cost at 20.7% of sales were higher than last year mainly due to annual merit increase addition of field force in india impact from other regions and include some currency impact other expenses were at 28.6% of sales lower than the same period last year mainly driven by reduced marketing selling and distribution and traveling expenses across markets as a result of the above the ebitda for the full year was at rupees 81324 million a growth of 25.5% over the same period last year with resulting ebitda margins of 24.5% versus 20% of last year excluding the exceptional items for both fi21 and fi20 and the non recurring tax credit for fi21 the adjusted net profit for fi21 was at rupees 59317.8 million up 47.4% year on year with resulting net profit margin at 17.9% reported net profit for fi21 was at rupees 29038.2 million with reported eps at rupees 12.1 the company has repaid debt of about us dollar 580 million in fi21 the benefit of which is visible in the reduction in finance cost as at 31st march 21 the ex taro net debt stands approximately us dollar 179 million let me now briefly discuss taro's performance taro posted q4 fi21 sales of us dollar 148 million and adjusted net profit of us dollar 31 million on a year on year basis sales for q4 fi21 were lower by 15.3% while the adjusted net profit was lower by 42.6% for the full year fi21 sales were at us dollar 549 million and the adjusted net profit was at us dollar 141 million I will now hand over to Mr. Kirti Gonorkar, who will share the performance of our India business. Thank you, Murli. Let me take you through the performance of our India business. For Q4, sales of branded formulation in India were rupees twenty-six thousand seven hundred nine million, recording a growth of twelve point nine percent over Q4 last year. India business accounted for about 32% of consolidated sales for Q4. For Q4, while the chronic segment continued to show steady growth, the sub-chronic segment witnessed a recovery. The acute segment is still facing some challenges due to lower incidence of infection and less patient flow to the doctor's clinic. For most part of Q4, we saw a normalizing trend. and pharmaceutical companies had started spending on traveling branding and promotion travel costs for mrs increased in q4 however there is some uncertainty now given the significant increase in covid cases on account of second wave and the lockdown in many parts of the country for q4 we launched 31 new products in the indian market let me now discuss our response to the covid-19 pandemic we had approach to fight the pandemic the steps that we took include ensuring continuous supply of medicine to the patients 
supply of multiple therapeutics used in the treatment of covid-19 like remdesivir favipiravir etolizumab ivermectin methylprednisolone we have also ramped up production of liposomal amphotericin b which is used in the treatment of black fungus post covid complication observed in patients and for our the first company to develop generic liposomal products in india we have donated covid medicines and many other items like pp kit mask sanitizer gloves etc at the same time we have entered into two different licensing agreement one with eli lilly for paracetamol and another with msd for a drug called molnupiravir to help alleviate the burden of covid-19 in india sun pharma is the largest pharmaceutical company in india holds approximately 8.2% market share in the domestic market as per march 2021 aiocd avax mat report for q4 our market share was at 8.3% as per aiocd x we also continue to remain the partner of choice for in licensing of products give up on our number one position in many therapy areas including therapies for the treatment of covid infection coupled with our large distribution network i will now hand over the call to abhay thank you kirti i will briefly discuss the performance highlights of our us business for q4 our overall sales in the us grew by 1.3% over q4 last year to us dollars 370 million mainly due to decline in taro sales as the market is not yet fully normalized us accounted for about 32% of consolidated sales for the quarter our specialty revenues in us have grown over q4 last year mainly driven by elumia sequa and absorica ld for the full year fy21 the specialty business has grown over previous year despite the sharp reduction of sales in q1 on account of the global pandemic growth drivers include kelumia sequa absorica ld and yonsa as you may be aware the generic of absorica has entered the market in april and simultaneously we have also launched our authorized generic doctors clinics have been open during the quarter although the situation is yet to fully normalize however compared to the first 9 months of the year the travel and branding and promotional cost increased in q4 let me now update you on our us generics business as you have all seen the us generic business continues to be competitive the sun x taro generics business has recorded year on year growth driven by a combination of new launches better supply chain management and incremental upsides from shortages i will now hand over the call to mr shankar thank you abhay i will briefly discuss the performance highlights of our other businesses as well as give you an update on our r&d initiatives our sales in emerging markets were us dollar 192 million for q4 up by about 2.7% year on year the underlying growth in constant currency terms was higher at 5.3% emerging markets accounted for about 17% of total sales for q4 formulation sales in rest of the world markets excluding us emerging markets were us dollar 163 million in q4 up by about 5.5% over q4 last year rest of the world markets accounted for approximately 14% of consolidated q4 revenues api sales for q4 were at 4357 million down by about 9.9% over 
over Q4 last year. Our R&D efforts spans across both specialty and generic businesses, and we continue to invest in building the pipeline for various markets, including the U.S. emerging markets, rest of the world markets, and for India. Consolidated R&D investment for Q4 was at rupees. 5,571 million, accounting for 6.6% of sales. For the full year, R&D investment was 21,499 million, accounting for about 6.5% of sales. Our current generic pipeline for the U.S. markets includes 94 ANDs and nine NDAs awaiting approval with the U.S. FDA. In addition, we are evaluating development for some biosimilars, which can be classified amongst the third wave of biosimilars. The board has proposed a final dividend of rupees two per share for the year FY21, in addition to the interim dividend of 5.5 per equity share declared on January 29, 2021. And lastly, on the guidance for FY22, given the uncertainties of the pandemic in the near term, we are refraining from giving a guidance for FY22. However, all our businesses are well positioned and our endeavor will be to grow all of these businesses, notwithstanding the near-term uncertainties related to COVID-19. With this, I would like to leave floor open for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, on the uh, speciality revenue in the quarter, there seems to be a moderation on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, uh, even though data on Illumina shows uh, you know, good prescription traction, uh, sequencing improvements. So some color on uh, what drove the moderation fee? I think it's a combination of three factors. Like I said on my last call, December, which is the end of the financial year in the U.S. context, there is a higher buy-in. Uh, also in Jan, uh, a lot of insurance uh, sets in, uh, and, uh, or resets rather. And patients change uh, either the provider or the kind of insurance they have, and then the verification process uh, takes a little more time and it goes into threat before really sales normalize. And the third, I think, which is also important for us to remember is that uh, during the period of December, uh, the pandemic uh, situation in the U.S. was into what we see today, really new cases, uh, over 300,000 almost on every single year. The combination of three uh, factors, uh, I'm, I'm quite satisfied that uh, we are uh, well poised to deliver on our own objectives. Okay, understood. Uh, and, you know, one other question on, uh, you know, speciality. If I look at, you know, the traction in CEQA, uh, there seems to be some, you know, let me say the market share seems to have stabilized over the last few, uh, you know, weeks and months. Uh, is there any specific anything specific that we are seeing there now that you know US is opened? Are we not seeing enough traction uh, on people? 
No, I think CIPAVI will continue to grow. And my personal uh, sense is that uh, uh, doctors have accepted the product. The team is also now able to make a lot more face-to-face -face calls and participating in live uh, conferences, which for a new company, I think, is important to be able to be seen by your customers. So I think that will help us. So in the initial phase for a newer product, to be able to do this all in a virtual environment was a challenge. That's mm -hmm. uh, gradually improving in the U.S. So I, I feel pretty good about the product we have. Okay, so you expect continued momentum on the market share front? We certainly hope so. Understood. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Nia. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nithya Balasubramanian from the Bernstein Research. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. So my question is also on uh, the U.S. portfolio. So the first one is on Taro. So we have seen that for the last several quarters, it's continued to contract both at the top, both at the top line and the bottom line level. So just want to understand what is the outlook for the business? How do you see the shaping over a like say the short to mid term period? So Uday in his calls on Taro has actually uh, been uh, speaking for this. The only thing uh, which I will not, I mean, so on Taro I will not get into, but I can see that overall in the dermatology portfolio and market, uh, there is definitely lesser uh, patient flow even up to the end of the year. Uh, Taro, of course, has a lot of product which are either number one or number two with the uh, positive uh, you know, high market share. And, and therefore, the pressure on uh, Taro to hold on to its market share is uh, higher. So I think it's a combination of all this. But we recognize your point, and I think the task for us uh, as a company is to try and find ways to grow the tarot business as well. So I, I think all of us are hoping that things will hop back to normal at some point of time. And I think you also commented that clinics have started operating. So if COVID is not a factor anymore, uh, do you continue to see this as a, as a business will continue to shrink because prices will keep eroding because the commentary we heard from Taro as well was that the environment is not great. Do you see this resolving at some point of time? So I will speak to the dermatology segment. I mean, even today, if I read different reports, and different reports obviously will go with numbers, but I think the maximum number that I see of patient footfalls returning to the doctor's clinic in derm is around 70%. So that is the uh, addressable market now in terms of the patient uh, visits to doctors in the derm space. So that's a challenge that uh, you know businesses which are under will continue to face. And I'll, we hope going ahead, the situation will uh, improve because of the higher rate of vaccination in the US and a certain loosening up of uh, uh, you know, social distancing norms which are now taking place, but that's ahead of us. Got it. Thank you. Can we also assume that as the, I think Lebanon was a Lebanon was a bit of a drag in FI21 for you for the same reason. So now that again volumes are picking up and patient footfalls are increasing, is that likely to become a meaningful contributor again? So I clearly saw a little bit of an uptick uh, in the fourth quarter as compared to the previous quarters, and. Uh, uh, going ahead, of course, if uh, the situation normalizes in terms of uh, elective surgeries uh, and procedures, then I think level and should pick up. But uh, it, will it happen? I think is anybody's guess. I mean, the situation is fluid, not just in the U.S., but I think uh, globally. Got it. Thank you so much. I have one last one on biosimilars. It was briefly mentioned in the opening remarks. If you can choose some color on what you meant by third wave, are you looking at it more as a as a portfolio which would support your specialty portfolio or is this a stand standalone business that you're trying to develop? No, I think we are looking at products which have significant future patent expiry dates uh, so that uh, we can be amongst the first approvals. That's the focus and priority. Uh, a, and that's not the only, there are multiple priorities and also finding a way by which we can leverage uh, our presence in market so that we can successfully uh, build a uh, biosimilars portfolio. 
uh, and if you, can we can we take that to mean it's beyond 2028 20, 2030 time frame that's the kind of launch date you're looking at that's correct thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of prakash agarwal from access capital please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity i just wanted to understand the scale up in r and d from here given that we have started the additional trials so how do we think the r and d and other expenses going forward for the year 22 and 23 so they will gradually go up so two things will happen one is total r and d expenses will go up and within that the percentage of the money spent on innovative r and d also is likely to go up so i think uh, uh, we've not because since we're not giving any specific guidance but generally we've uh, tried to keep our uh, r and d spend between uh, or let's say 8 to 9% of our turnover this year because of the significant uh, disruption in the clinical studies the clinical trial spend this year was much more subdued then what we would have liked it to be uh, some color on other expenses in terms of the scale up is largely done in terms of specialty or when we see the impact of uh, you know lockdown and pandemic going down it will again come up so general guidance is that what you see as a significant reduction in the marketing spend in all markets is likely to go up uh, we will try and see that we don't go back to the previous percentage spent but uh, in some markets uh, that may not be possible for the us may be able to can respond okay thank you and second question on adorica so how we have seen in terms of you know uh, as you said they, uh, you know april we have started to see competition uh, i mean uh, is it a uh, you know since it's a single player uh, entry have you seen a bigger impact or a very marginal impact so we we don't have clarity because this was launched only in uh, towards the you know end of april uh, he, he may has not closed for me so difficult to assess impact uh, um, fingers crossed and i'm watchful of uh, what is likely to happen uh however say, having said that we also launched our own authorized generic and uh, we have uh, locked up a few customers whom we had targeted for our share of the market okay perfect but i i said asking because you just made a comment on guidance that you well position to grow across business segment so uh, we include the specialty as well that's it yeah abhay would you like to respond um no i'm i'm not clear what the question was at the end so despite the competition sorry uh, despite the competition in exorica right. uh, and ag coming in which i assume would be you know in your base business us base business uh the question was since we made a comment on guidance well position to grow across the you again sorry i lost you again uh, the question I'm, was can you repeat sir. please am i audible now sir yeah much better thank you uh, sir question is on uh, you know the growth guidance well position to grow across business segments on the backdrop right. of right. Uh, you know the exorica generic competition coming in right so i mean if you are talking about if if i understand you correctly i think that will be also the business growth despite the competition we have in exorica is that the question yes sir yeah i think we will be uh, that's the, that's the idea that's the plan and that's how we are uh, approaching the whole issue exorica is one of the products that we have in the specialty businesses there are avenues and opportunities for us to find ways to grow in uh, other products and of course uh, as an organization you also have to be always looking at another you know bd opportunity so that we will continuously evaluate and uh, keep our eyes on any good opportunity that comes our way right sir okay thank you and all the best thank you thank you 
The next question is from the line of Samir Vaisivala from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and greetings, everyone. Uh, so, first question is on Illumia. Uh, can you share, you know, um, some color on these repeat, uh, repeat uh, prescribers and repeat uh, uh, patients uh, in this? Uh, How is the uh, underlying dynamics? So, it's a great question, Samir, to be honest, but I really do not have that kind of granular uh, details because it is not as simple. Uh, to get that data and, and even if we get we it's quite expensive so uh, in the recent past internally we have tried to do our own kind of uh, modeling and made uh, assumptions and trying to come to a certain picture even now to be honest uh, Samir it's quite sketchy as far as I'm concerned and uh, a, a lot of assumptions go into it so for me to give you an answer uh, would never really be correct so I'm not trying to sidestep your question Samir but I really do not have. I wish I had. That would have made my life uh, much easier. But uh, I don't. That's a fact. Uh, uh, no worries on that, sir. So, so uh, what will uh, what will get you to next? Uh, you know, hundred million dollar incremental hundred million dollar on this product in the U.S. I, I'm thinking that is it the mining of the uh, current uh, prescribers, or do you think you still need to go out and get more and more doctors in the fold? As far as I am concerned, it will be a combination of three things. And I think one of the most important things is not mining of customers, but mining of data that we have on the product and uh, be able to continuously you know, communicating uh, something new to the customers, which keeps the interest alive uh, as far as they are concerned in our uh, conversations with them. So I think that's the first and most important thing as far as I'm concerned. The, the second is continuous involvement of uh, key opinion leaders uh, to give us podium time and speak favorably on the product. And third, of course, is uh, a combination of both mining of existing customers as well as uh, expanding the prescriber base. So I think it's all of these put together and therefore I think uh, uh, execution by the team on all these fronts becomes uh, so, so much important. Okay, great. Thank you so much. If, with your permission, one last question from my side. And uh, can you just update us on Halol, um, you know, any tentative timelines time over so there? And, you know, how should we think about new launches uh, until uh, Halol opens up? So I think as we have shared with uh, you in the past, I think we are waiting for the agency to uh, inspect. We've requested for an inspection. Uh, now I think it's up to them to plan and uh, inspect the facility uh, and hopefully this time we should be able to clear it successfully uh, that's the focus uh, i think uh, we are as i said uh, in the beginning the uh, that we expect all our businesses to do well and grow uh, so we are also expecting the generic business in the us also to grow uh, and uh, that's based on the visibility that we have with uh, approvals that we can expect. Uh, so in case if uh, when Halol gets approved uh, during the year, then and if we get new approvals, that will potentially add to our plan for growth. Okay, great. Very right clear, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Damayanti Kirai from HSBC Securities and Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is on Illumia trial for another indication, psoriatic arthritis. So we understand COVID has disrupted uh, the progress, but can you provide how, uh, where we are in that uh, indication studies? And when we are uh, expecting to uh, complete the phase three and do filing? So I I think we we got affected at two levels. One is because the patient footfall in the clinics, which we had uh, already started as a clinical trial site, had come down. So their ability to recruit patient had come down. And the second was uh, uh, the CRO's ability to 
start multiple new sites uh and that also uh, got affected hopefully uh, we've seen some pick up in uh, starting new sites in last few weeks and hopefully uh, uh, that should help us during the year but in this uncertainty related to the recruitment difficult to give you any kind of specific timeline for uh, the uh, completion of the enrollment because i think uh, uh, you have to first enroll the subjects and then the subjects we have to monitor for a year okay uh, okay got it uh, my second question is on uh, specialty spend so uh, uh, some clarification there so in earlier communication uh, you have indicated that we have uh, broadly optimized uh, dtc and other marketing costs for uh, key specialty brands and uh, you also commented uh, with uh, us market opening up we uh, expect these costs to go up so how should we look at the uh, specialty spend over uh, next few quarters my answer would be i think uh, sort of dilip bhai said a while ago if i look at current trends i think uh, with uh, more and more doctors allowing in clinic visits and some of these uh, you know virt- uh, virtual conferences going back to being face to face and live uh, cost will increase however we'll make every attempt to see that we don't go back to the uh, original level but in a fluid and a pandemic situation i think as a company and as a team we need to be constantly uh agile and nimble to be able to make uh, change in decisions very rapidly if we have to okay uh got it sir thank you thank you for your answers thank you thank you the next question is from the line of surya patra from philip capital please go ahead yeah thanks for this opportunity sir um uh, so my first question is on the ul uh is it fair to believe the uh, uh, uh us portfolio should be seeing a kind of a profitable growth in fy22 uh, driven by at least two factors uh, one is that uh, kind of a steady progress what we are witnessing on the specialty front and uh, uh, and the second part to be possibly bottoming out of the operating underperformance uh, what or bottoming out of the uh, the tariffs uh, Uh, operating performance what we have already seen uh, in the recent past because the what you mentioned of course it is correct so uh, that the prescription trend since like almost a down uh, 29 30% uh, in last entire one year period due to covid in the derma side in the us but uh, it seems that uh, taro has significantly outperformed that which is flat is kind of a prescription trend so is my con- is my understanding is correct that we could be driven by these two large component of the us sales taro as well as uh, specialty we can we see a kind of profitable progress uh, on the us business front so taro stand alone you when you see the results they are already a profitable uh, business and as far as sun is concerned Uh, we haven't given uh, uh, business line wise profitability numbers so uh, difficult to answer your question but mm-hmm. yeah broadly of course yes i mean you are in business at the end of the day to be running a profitable business and that's the objective for any given business and my point basically was that uh, obviously we will see a sequential volume growth with the opening of the us market but uh, will that be along with the margin expansion in that market so basically that understanding i wanted to have by the word profitable focus so i mean i think my answer remains the same i mean that's the objective that you increase your margins as you go along but specific business wise we we, we don't give the break up so uh, that's the that's the most i can do on this call okay uh, just uh, uh, a, a kind of additional point on that see generally what it was understood that the specialty spend uh, was elevated obviously uh, in the initial period of the launches 
and having seen kind of a ramp up so we we possibly have to curtail the dtc kind of activities for elumia although there was a kind of additional dtc activity for sequa but uh, generally it was understood that the overall specialty spend should see a gradual uh, correction from the elevated level of let's say 520 so are we on that front uh, seeing a kind of a, uh, declining trend although we will see a, some kind of a normalization in the uh, overall sta and cost front you yeah, understand so i have said this in my earlier calls as well we are now more or less optimized what we need to spend for each uh, product group or a bu and i think we are comfortable with where we are and with the expansion of the uh, t- uh, increase in the top line therefore i think margin should definitely uh, improve okay uh, just second question sir on this uh, uh, dilip sir if you can just respond on the covid side do you see covid this is an kind of opportunity by in any manner for for san pharma so in the sense that there is a short term kirti can respond faster but uh, there is a short term increase in the business for products which are specifically used in covid uh, as on today i think we are not in vaccine manufacturing or distribution business and we haven't announced anything as yet so so i think uh, kirti maybe you can respond so uh, let's see we can uh, the opportunity for us and as i said in my opening remarks uh, we and that products in our portfolio kirti you are not audible to me yeah yeah kirti you are not audible you are breaking yeah yeah you are breaking yeah but you can hear me or yeah, yeah, yeah. Much no, better. Exactly. yeah thank you better. okay so what i was saying is uh, we have launched couple of uh, new products for the treatment of covid which includes product like remdesivir italizumab and favipiravir and uh, last year uh, by the time we launched the product in the first wave the uh, almost by the month of november december number of cases were reduced and then the in the second wave from march and april the number of cases has been increased so we will get some short term benefit uh, in this uh, next financial year but at the same time we we have good number of covid portfolio products with us which which are been used off labels uh, and they are doing well uh, in coming quarters sure also we have yeah so th- there are products uh, which will give us some benefit but it would be a short term and we don't know how long this uh, second wave will last okay yes thank you thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of tushar manudhane from motilal aswal financial services please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity uh just would like to understand on the buy similar front what kind of investment are we envisaging over next 3 uh, to 4 years on the product development side and subsequently on the manufacturing front i don't think we have crystallized this uh, in specifics to be able to respond but uh, uh, I, as i see our overall r&d spend Uh, for us to be able to take care of uh, biosimilars both in r&d as well as if i see our annual capex for upgradation new capacity and downfield to create a additional capacity for biosimilars so it shouldn't be a big drain neither on our cash flow or on our profitability Okay, sir. So previously we were restraining from getting into biosimilars because of the regulatory uh, or lack of clarity on the regulatory front. Now that is there, but at the same time we have seen experiences of other companies like biosimilars also having considerable price erosion. 
despite i mean in addition to spending significant amount on the development as well as on the manufacturing front so still do you see this as a good opportunity over next 4 to 5 years yeah i think so because uh, depending again on the product and when you enter the markets i am expecting that over time with familiarity and confidence that doctors will develop on the biosimilars uh, we will see increasing percentage of patients being treated with biosimilars uh, uh, okay so that helps thanks a lot thanks thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sayantan bhomik from pine bridge investment please go ahead uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, just wanted to understand uh, we recently invested in in this uh, company called abcd technologies along with a few other companies so if you can just uh, give us a thought process on on, on this investment and, and what do we uh, intend to do with this uh that's the first question and secondly if you could just elaborate our efforts on esg and and what we have uh, uh done um, uh, how how we the company has you know supported the community during the second wave sure so kirti maybe you yeah, can yeah, respond to the first yeah yeah uh, so as indicated in our announcement regarding the development some of the large pharma companies have come together to form abcd technologies which will further invest in digitalization to make the distribution of pharma product more efficient uh, that is the objective over a period of time it will result in a better inventory management and ensuring that the pharma products are available to patient at the right time and at the right place uh, is will this be some some sort of a uh, competitive competitor uh, positioning compared to some of the online pharmacies is, is that something is is that the intent or, or is it just purely a, a, a back end optimization it's more to make the uh, the supply chain more efficient okay yeah. on the uh, esg related front uh we we are working on both the sustainability and the esg which that of course covers the energy the water other related uh, aspects as the gre standards and uh, we will be uh, coming out with the first edition of our initiatives and the report duly issued uh, along with our annual report in this uh, financial year both on the sustainability the detailed report will be done uh, by us Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sham Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question. Just the first one on the India business. Uh, if you can just tell us about the field force as it stands today in terms of either number, as well as the productivity uh, that you are looking at. I think you put it out in your presentation. So just wanted an update. Uh, on this from a fiscal 21 perspective in terms of uh, you are saying number of field force or, or yes yes number of field force maybe the pcpm that they are currently today and where do you think this can actually trend going ahead sure now as I, as we discussed in our last call during the last uh, jan to march we we have expanded our field force and uh, we have added about 1000 uh, people in the field which includes uh, medical reps and managers so now we are in excess of about uh, 10000 people which includes uh, everyone in the field right from uh, uh, medical rep to all the managers put together so since we have added the field force last year and then uh, we we entered into a pandemic on uh, quarter 1 and quarter 2 the performance in that first two quarter uh, was not up to the mark and the field force was also new they were to visit to the doctors and that could not happen but uh, from quarter 3 and quarter 4 this new field force could visit the doctors and develop certain relationships so generally we don't give our pm pm uh, but what i can say our pm pm due to expansion was almost flat or slightly lower than what it was in the last financial year 
but more important is now this field force is well settled so in the coming financial year 21 22 we we think that we will get a benefit of our expansion and our reach to the doctors and we'll also see the improvement in pm pm and productivity got it very helpful uh, second question is on capital allocation priorities uh, this year looks like we have used uh, some of it towards uh reducing our debt levels uh right if i picked up the number right x arrow debt is like 170 million or so so how should we look at uh fiscal 22 in terms of capital allocation and also a related question on what is the capex for fiscal 21 that was reported and what are we looking at for next year thank you so morally would you respond So, so in, in in terms of the capital allocation, as we are maintained in our previous earnings call, our endeavor will be also to become uh, uh, debt free at gross level X taro. So, the 179 million what we talked about, which is standing the net debt overall gross level, what we have posted, will be our endeavor is to by March 22, we'll continue to wind down the debt. At the same time, uh, with the cash what we have, the leverage we have, uh, definitely for the growth of the business. we will be open to investments if any opportunities are attractive for growth profitable business also also capex he he wants information on capex capex for the uh, fi 22 yeah, yeah. Uh, average uh, in terms of each year overall capex uh, in the around about uh, we do about 200 billion plus across various uh, geographies so but this uh, this year uh, we have worked out around almost similar number it will not be much very high got it thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of krishnendu saha from quantum amc Please go ahead. Yes, hi, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, I just had a couple of questions. We talk about three car, we talk about up to five LD, but we don't talk about the sprinkle family, the Tizel and the Elora. Is Elora what the name? So you call it wrong. Uh, are they not significant enough, or do we don't spend much of marketing spend behind them? What is the thought there? How do we see that system of portfolio? Because In every talk, we don't talk about anything about the business we launched, but they they are simply mentioned in annual reports. So just wondering how the thing is out there, please. It's a niche segment, and the idea of having this, you know, look at a very specific uh, niche area of, and especially within back patients who have dysphagia. So, none of the products individually will be very very big products. Our range will be a decent, meaningful uh, range when everything comes to market, and these are coming in trends and phases, so not everything at one time. So it's a small part of our business, but uh, it's a pro- it's an interesting area to be in because you are genuinely doing something which is needed by the patients in the long-term care centers and those who cannot swallow their medication. So it's it's a, it's a, I, I I personally like that segment. Not for the dollar value, but because of what it does for elderly patients. Right. But do we do we have a force behind it? Is force, or we just let it be the way it is? Uh, can you just repeat your? Do, do, do we promote? Do we promote the product? Or yeah, we, we, we promote it uh, yeah, to patients and doctors who visit LTC centers. It's a promoted group. Of right. Okay. Thank. And one more question. Uh, we we have this GLP. Uh, we are doing trials on that normal scheme of the speciality product. How does this fit in? We do have another. We do pick up another for via derma, via uh, ophthalmology. So where does this fit in in the whole scheme of things? If the if say the normal trials another two years out, this comes out good, and the the data was out in the uh, that situation. So how how do we see a this product going ahead? So. Clearly, in India and emerging market, we have presence in diabetology and cardiology. So this is interesting uh, for large markets like U.S., Europe, as well as uh, uh, other regulated markets. We will look at options for 
licensing it to somebody because it's a, a product that will require a large field force in excess of 1000 people and that's not the plan for us to so our objective would be to develop it at up to a level and then look for a licensing partner uh, i can only say that the early uh, read out that we are getting in the clinical trial in terms of everything in terms of uh, uh, weight loss in terms of triglyceride reduction as well as in terms of uh, uh, potential effect on hb1c but it's very limited because these are all healthy subjects so we are quite excited with the profile that the product has demonstrated to you and just one last clarification uh, um, the reason I asked is because we launched uh, Illumina in Japan uh, but our ROW uh, dollar term revenue has been going down has it not taken in meaningfully or is it because of other reasons that the ROW uh, or it takes some more time because I remember last time we did speak about it's going to take a couple of more months to a year to get the whole hospital business in, in Japan done so we'll just some, throw some light coupled with the fact that the ROW revenue on dollar term is going down Oh, no, maybe just to review, just, just, just thought process. Thank you. That's my last question. You're talking of sales going down in Japan. No, uh, I'm talking about uh, the reason I asked uh, Japan is because the ROW market, uh, the dollar revenue is going down from 178 to 173, 163, instead of us launching in the product in Japan. So uh, is it going to take us more time or has the product not picked up in Japan? I'm just trying to understand the couple of the ROW numbers if I'm thinking of correctly. No, I think uh, introduction of a product like uh, Illumia in Japan will not be a huge uh, impact in the first initial period of launch. So you should not look at uh, the first quarter impact of the product in terms of sales. Uh, we believe that over time it will become a important and meaningful part of our uh, business in Japan. And that's the focus. Uh, the, uh, the overall rest of the world market, uh, Japan is an important component, but uh, uh, there are many other geographies which are also important in terms of size. So, yes. sure. thank you, thank you. Uh, th thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, on the US business, uh, two parts. One is on the generic side. Uh, if you take a two to three year view, broadly speaking, uh, is a large chunk of our growth in this business largely contingent upon the approval that we get from Halone, or are there are other drivers uh, in the business possible? Okay. No, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I think your question is more to do with new product introduction, right? Yes, I'm, I'm just trying to understand in terms of when you look at the generic business, uh, you know, what is going to be the driver? If it's going to be new product launches, is it largely going to be the Halol uh, portfolio, driven portfolio? I think new product Halol launches resources? clearly are important to be able to continue to find ways to grow the business. And if you see, you know, uh, despite Halol not having been inspected, in the in the financial year, we were able to launch uh, around 18 uh, products, 18 new products, and also a few relaunches. So uh, there are different avenues by which uh, we will be able to bring out new products from uh, different facilities. It's not only Halo dependent. And secondly, on the US specialty business, again, we take care of the same broad, broad brush to two, two to three year view. Uh, is it fair to say that the current portfolio of products that we have uh, will largely continue to drive growth for us or there are possibilities of product uh, of portfolio additions meaningfully uh, contributing uh, over this time frame? So first of all, I think the current portfolio that we have, uh, we can still optimize and do uh, better. And there is clearly headroom for us to grow with the current uh, portfolio. 
And in addition to that, as I said earlier, to in response to one of the questions, I mean, it is in any company which in, wants to grow in the long term will continue to look at opportunities to develop its business and look at any inorganic way of growing the business. So it's a combination of both. But clearly, the products that we have in the basket today have a, a lot more headroom to continue to grow. And lastly, uh, you mentioned about the vaccine. Uh, we, don't, we don't do anything on the vaccines currently. Uh, but uh, so from a capability perspective, uh, do we have capabilities to do drug substance manufacturing or to do a pill finish? Uh, I mean, given the uh, manufacturing, uh, very extensive manufacturing network, uh, are there capabilities inherent in our network uh, to work on this? Oh, I, I think our preliminary assessment indicates that uh, vaccines will require a dedicated manufacturing facility, and it cannot be produced in a facility where you are making multiple other products. Uh, in addition to the specific uh, different design for those facilities, depending on the uh, type of vaccine that you are producing. So, so that's broadly our understanding. So we currently don't have uh, any facility which uh, we are looking at for uh, uh, producing vaccine. Okay. Thank you, Ambassador. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Randeria from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, and thanks for taking my question. So, first, it's on Sikoa. So, there could be a likelihood that there might be a restart of genetic maybe later this calendar year. So, I'm wondering if you could share your thoughts on how this potentially could affect Sikoa uptake. So we still have no visibility uh, on when the generic. Okay. This okay. So it could have been launched a year and a half, two years ago also, but we haven't seen. So to put a timeline to it, and therefore look at you know a preemptive situation is uh, pointless because we don't know when it's going to get launched. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the second question is on Exorica. So with this product now going generic and obviously, you know, the price erosion becoming cheaper, do you see that the Exorica market, including generic, could show higher volumes, maybe at the cost of some brands of Teva or Mylan? Sorry, too completely. So okay. brands of what did you say? So I was saying that with Exorica going generic now, right. obviously becoming cheaper. Right. Uh, do you see this market expanding at the cost of, you know, Teva and Mylan's brands like Einstein? Personally, know? I don't believe so because, uh, you know, isotech in moderate to serious. Because generally, we use other options before they go into uh, isotech. The direction of Epsorica, I don't think the market really will expand. That's my view, though. No. Uh, uh, by what I understand he is asking is that uh, whether the overall share of Absorica or Absorica generic in the isotretinoin market. So my, my answer was in the same line, yes, uh, that if I look at TRX, forget the value of the TRX, whether it's a brand use or a generic use, will the number of TRXs for uh, isotretinoin increase because there are generics available? I, I don't really believe so. Okay, okay, sir. That, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nimish Desai for closing comments. Yes, thank you, everybody, for taking time out to join this call. Uh, if any of your questions have remained unanswered, please do send them across and we will have them answered. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Sun Pharmaceutical Industries Limited, that concludes the conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.